welcome to another video. And this one, we're going to be looking at another build from the Misery Gauntlet. This time, it's Lala Gate's Body Swap Chieftain. And I wanted to cover this build in particular because of all of the different builds that I saw being played in this gauntlet, this one might just be the most interesting to me, and it might be my favourite as well. Lala Gates made a great use of the new tools available in the Wildwood mechanic, with the core of his setup being built around one of the new corpses offered by the Breaker of Oaths, that being the Dark Marionette, which has been used to great effect in many builds this league. When the Dark Marionette is raised as a spectre, it will explode on death for damage based on its maximum life, but most importantly it will respawn shortly after dying making it have incredible synergy with the new Body Swap of Sacrifice Transfigured Gem. This new version of Body Swap will prioritise minions instead of corpses, exploding them for a big chunk of fire damage based on the maximum life of the minion. And this is just the offensive side of the build. Lala Gate managed to create a setup making use of this new utility, while still obtaining a very respectable level of defence as well. Let's head over to the path of building for a more detailed look at this build. Lala Gate has chosen the Chieftain Ascendancy, so there's no better place to begin than the 90% Elemental Resistances, achievable thanks to the Velaco Storm's Embrace Ascendancy Notable. This one applies modifiers to maximum fire resistance to cold and lightning resistance as well. So 2% maximum elemental resistance and 1% maximum fire resistance is being gained from the Prismatic Skin Wheel, and another 1% is gained from the Soul of Steel Wheel just below that. Then another 1% is gained from the Barbarism Life Wheel up here, and Lala Gate is also using a That Which Was Taken Unique Jewel, which provides a further 2% to maximum fire resistance, and he's gaining another 1% from a Primalist Charm here. Then 1% is gained from the Eldritch Implicit on his boots, and the remaining maximum resistance comes from Purity of Fire, which hits a level 23 breakpoint for 5% maximum fire resistance, combined with 20% aura effect, to provide 6% to maximum fire resistance. And all of these modifiers combined with the Velaco Notable bring all elemental resistances to the cap of 90%. Lala Gate has also managed to just about squeeze 100% chance to suppress spell damage into his build. This is obtained in part from the Mage Bane Keystone which grants 1% chance to suppress spell damage per 15 dexterity, at the cost of losing the inherent evasion scaling from this stat. Since the build uses Unwavering Stance for stun avoidance, which also makes it so that you cannot evade attacks, the downside on Mage Bane is irrelevant, so this keystone is pure upside. The Reflexes Wheel is also taken here for a further 14% chance to suppress spell damage. Add to that the triple tier 1 spell suppression modifiers on the helmet, gloves and boots for another 41% chance and two Primalist Charms for 10% and 12% chance respectively. The final 12% chance required to reach the 100% chance to suppress spell damage comes from the Entrench Anointment on the Amulet. On top of the 100% chance to suppress spell damage, Lala Gate is also making use of Tempest Shield for the shock immunity that it provides and the 26% chance to block spells, adding another defensive layer which is especially useful against flurries of spell hits. So with 90% elemental resistances and capped spell suppression, the defences are starting to look really good, especially against elemental spell hits. But what about physical damage, in particular physical attacks, since the character cannot evade them either due to the use of unwavering stance? Lala Gate is using a setup which combines as much physical damage taken as elemental damage as possible, while still making use of Determination to shore up the defences against the remaining hit damage that is taken as physical damage. The Cloak of Flame unique body armour provides 40% of physical damage taken as fire damage, whilst a Max Roll Dawnbreaker provides a further 20% of the same stat. These two modifiers also apply to physical damage over time, so 60% of any physical damage over time that the character takes will be mitigated by the 90% fire resistance, and therefore things like bleeding are much less of an issue. The helmet then has a crafted Corel modifier for 8% of physical damage from hits taken as fire damage, and an Eldritch Implicit for 6% of physical damage from hits taken as lightning damage, for a total of 74% of physical hit damage being mitigated by elemental resistances. The remaining 26% would be mitigated by the respectable 25,000 armour, 
increased to 37,000 if flasks are active. This armor is also incredibly useful against one of the gauntlet modifiers which appears in red maps, which makes monsters gain 20% of physical damage as extra chaos damage. As Lalagate is making use of the armor and energy shield mastery up here to apply 10% of armor to chaos damage taken from hits, and this portion of armor is applied post chaos resistance mitigation, making it more effective against the resulting smaller hit. If the character was stationary when a hit was taken, which will often be the case, as similar to Flicker Strike, teleporting with body swap, the character is still considered to be stationary, and therefore Arctic Armor's defensive property would be applied. This reservation skill grants freeze immunity, whilst providing around 20% less fire and physical hit damage taken while stationary. Synergizing very well with this build's defensive setup to help mitigate incoming physical hits. This build also has a large amount of attack block from the Dawnbreaker shield, though this is less reliable in situations where lots of damage is being absorbed, as one of its other modifiers makes you lose 1% attack block per 200 fire damage taken from hits recently. Now, one of the most important defensive tools that this build has, especially in a bossing setting, is the use of a timeless keystone, Tempered by War. This keystone is granted by the Lethal Pride Timeless Jewel when it's in the name of Rakiata. Tempered by War makes 50% of cold and lightning damage be taken as fire damage, and when combined with the Dawnbreaker Unique Shield, which also grants the same stats with lower percentages, a total of 60% of all of the cold damage and 66% of all of the lightning damage that this character takes will be taken as fire damage instead which is very important against damage type properties such as penetration. For example, the Uber Shaper's Ball ability which has 40% cold penetration. This build will be able to avoid penetration on 60% of the damage as it would be taken as fire damage instead of cold damage, and therefore the penetration wouldn't apply to that portion of the damage. Temper by War and the Dawnbreaker Shield also have great synergy with the Arctic Armor buff mentioned earlier as the portion of incoming cold and lightning damage that is being taken as fire damage instead would also be mitigated by the less fire damage modifier if it was a hit and if the character was stationary. The Temper by War Keystone also has a significant downside, in that it imposes a huge strain on your gear suffixes, as it also applies 50% less cold and lightning resistance. But the Chieftain is well suited to deal with this downside, as the Tessalio Cleansing Water Ascendancy Notable applies fire resistance to cold and lightning resistance to at 50% of its value, which is great for outgearing this downside. This build also has a decent amount of life recovery thanks to the fire mastery which provides one life regen per 1% uncapped fire resistance taken up here, and the hearty recovery wheel taken down here for nearly 900 life regeneration. There's also an Eldritch Implicit on the helmet for 12% of fire damage taken recouped as life, providing further synergy with Tempered by War. But lastly for the defenses, Lalagate is making use of a Watcher's Eye Unique Duel for reduced extra damage taken from critical strikes while affected by Determination, and when combined with a Lethal Pride Notable modifier here which grants the same stat, the build has 66% reduced extra crit damage taken. As mentioned earlier, this build uses the new Body Swap of Sacrifice to explode Raised Dark Marionette Spectres, and this damage originates from the character, not from the minion like it would with minion instability. This means that the damage can be scaled in many ways, but most important is minion life. 44% increased minion life is gained from the Sacrifice Wheel on the passive tree here, with another 30% coming from the minion Defense Mastery. Another 20% comes from the Righteous Army Wheel here, and another 34% from the Death Achievement Wheel taken up here. Then on gear, 26% increased minion life is gained from the Crafted Boots, and another 42% from the Belt, that's 33% from the Stygian Vise itself, and another 9% from the Ghastly Eye Jewel socketed within. The Minion Life Support Gem is being used with Ray Spectre for a further 20% increased Minion Life and 49% more Minion Life as well. And the Ray Spectre Gem itself is level 21, improved to 24 from gem level modifiers on gear. That's one from the Scepter, one from the Helmet, and one from the Amulet. This brings the total life for the Dark Marionette Ray Spectre to 127,951. 
Now, a level 20 body swap of sacrifice explodes a minion for 24% of its maximum life, but the quality on the gem also improves this scaling by 4% per 20% quality. Lardage is making use of a level 20, 23% quality body swap of sacrifice, which is improved to level 23 from the gem level modifiers mentioned earlier. And of course, he just has an Ashes of the Stars unique amulet, SSF Gauntlet by the way. This amulet increases the gem quality by 28%, for a total level 23 body swap of sacrifice with 51% quality, making the ability explode minions for 36% of their maximum life, a ridiculous 50% increase of the base level 20 scaling on the gem, and this large hit of fire damage is being used to ignite the enemy. The Chieftain's Ramako Sun's Light Ascendancy Nose Ball is being used, which synergizes very well with the stationary mechanics discussed earlier and with the ignite inflicted by Body Swab. But unfortunately, even with the defenses that this build has, standing still in the gauntlet is a recipe for disaster. So Lalage is making sure that he can still deal damage even when Ramako is inactive. Flammability, exposure and reduced fire resistance from the combustion support are all being used to lower the enemy fire resistance so that damage is still good even when the character is moving, whilst Flame Surge helps improve the ignite damage. Lastly, I'll mention the use of Guardian's Blessing in this build. This gem provides a temporary aura, in this case malevolence, around a supportive minion and makes the minion take physical damage over time. Importantly, Body Swap of Sacrifice deals damage based on the maximum life of a minion, not current life, and therefore it doesn't matter if the minion has 100% of its life or 10% when the explosion from Body Swap is caused, so the character can benefit from the malevolence aura without reserving mana and with no downside except the use of an extra gem link. Now, of course, with this being the gauntlet, Lalagate's Chieftain did eventually perish to the Uber Shaper Slam during his attempt at this boss, and I thought it would be an interesting addition to this video to take a look at just how much damage this ability actually dealt to his character, and whether or not he'd be able to survive it given the right conditions. So, with an average damage roll, the Uber Shaper Slam deals about 22,200 physical damage, and it's an attack. In the gauntlet, the uber bosses deal 80% increased damage, so this would deal around 40,000 physical damage. 68% of this damage is taken as fire, so 27,200 damage mitigated by the 90% fire resistance, down to 2,720 fire damage. 6% is taken as lightning, so 2,400 mitigated by the 90% lightning resistance, down to 240 and the remaining 10,400 damage is taken as physical damage, mitigated by armor which provides 33% damage reduction, down to 6,968, for a total of 9,928 damage taken. In the rip clip, you can see that Molten Shell is not active when the slam is taken, and the character is also moving right after Flame Dash, so Arctic Armor's less damage taken is also not active. Not only that, but unfortunately, the Granite Flask also times out right before the slam. If his character was stationary, the less physical and fire damage taken from Arctic Armor would be applied to those portions of the damage, lowering the total damage taken from 9,928 to 7,824. And if Molten Shell was active, it would provide a guard of 2,708, which takes 75% of damage before life or energy shield. Assuming the character had no energy shield, they'd survive this hit with about 530 life remaining. But that's an average damage roll, so what about if the Shaper Slam was a max damage roll and it was a crit? Accounting for the reduced extra damage taken from critical strikes, in this case it would deal around 52,900 damage. Even with the modifiers from Arctic Armor active, and both the Granite Flask and Molten Shell up, character would still die from this hit, and would need an extra 550 health or a ruby flask active to survive it. It's unfortunate to know that the character could have survived the slam, but an impressive run from Lalagate nevertheless. He finished 9th on the overall points ladder, downing all of the normal bosses and all of the release all at once maven invites, with the exception of the feared. I really enjoyed following Lardigate's progress and watching his build develop over the course of the Misery Gauntlet. And there you have it, another great Gauntlet build and performance. 
Did you enjoy this build breakdown? Let me know your thoughts on this Chieftain setup in the comments below. And stick around, I'll be covering more of the Gauntlet builds in the time between now and the next league. Thank you for your continued support, and thanks for watching. As always, stay tuned, and stay safe.